ओके वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर के आई एम प्रकाश वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ईसीई इन मदनपल्ली इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड साइंसेस के हियर इन दिस लेक्चर के वी आर गोइंग टू सी मॉड्यूलेशन के व्हाट इज मॉड्यूलेशन एंड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मॉड्यूलेशंस नेक्स्ट एंड द बेसिक कांसेप्ट्स रिलेटेड टू द कम्युनिकेशन ओके फर्स्ट वी विल सी के व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय कम्युनिकेशन ओके फर्स्ट के व्हाट आर द टॉपिक्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी एट फर्स्ट के फर्स्ट वन इंट्रोडक्शन दैट इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू कम्युनिकेशन देन वी विल सी के व्हाट आर द एलिमेंट्स दैट आर नीडेड इन ऑर्डर टू एस्टैब्लिश अ कम्युनिकेशन के नेक्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सी व्हाट इज मॉड्यूलेशन व्हाट इज द नीड फॉर मॉड्यूलेशन नेक्स्ट वी विल सी टाइप्स ऑफ मॉड्यूलेशन Okay, what are the different types of modulations? Next, we'll see. Okay, analog modulation schemes, and then we go for digital modulation schemes, and finally references. First, introduction. Okay, that is communication. Okay, what is communication? Communication is nothing but it is a process of exchanging or the transfer of information between points, between two points or more points. Okay, we call it as what a communication. Okay, in this communication, the one point must be the source, and the other point must be the a destination. Yes or no? Okay, if we don't have two or more than two points, okay, that means source and destination. Okay, then we can't say it is a a communication. At least we need two points or more than two points. Okay, suppose if we take okay radio broadcasting, okay. Okay, we need one point is source, and more than two points are the destinations. More than two points are a destinations. Okay, okay, one point must be source, and other point must be the destination. Then only we can say that the communication is meaningful. This communication may be a unidirectional or bidirectional. Okay, unidirectional means okay, okay, suppose a simplex communication, a radio broadcasting. Is where the radio station only sends the signal, and so many receivers. Okay, that means households. Okay, so many houses. Okay, we have radios. Okay, there we are going to receive the signals which is sent by the radio station. That is unidirectional communication only. Okay, and the communication may be a bidirectional. Bidirectional means, okay, suppose take telephone communication. Okay, there the two persons can. source and the destination can talk each other that type of communication we called as bidirectional communication okay that means communication may be unidirectional or it may be a, a bidirectional next okay we are going to see communication system okay that means in order to establish a communication what are the basic elements that we need is okay that we called as what a communication system is in order to establish a communication we need some elements the connection of all these elements is okay we called as what communication a system is okay the first one is information source okay generally if you want to transfer the information from one end to the other end okay we need information source is information source may be an information that is stored in the computer Okay, that may be a data, or it may be a picture, or it may be a voice. Yes, okay, that we call it as what information source. Or the song or video uh, that is played from the uh, any station. Okay, that is a source of information. Yes or no? Okay, generally the information source is a raw data. Okay, that means it is in a physical form, physical quantity form. Yes, okay, that is in sound form or in video form. Yes, okay, that is. Okay, that may be a music, it may be a voice, whatever it is. Okay, that is in a, a physical quantity. Okay, therefore, but our electronic devices can't work with the physical quantities. Yes or no? Therefore, what we have to do is, okay, we have to convert that physical quantity into an electrical quantity. Okay, in order to convert the physical quantity into an electrical quantity, okay, we are going to use the transducer. Okay, what is transducer? a okay, transducer is nothing but a device electronic device that converts the physical quantity into an electrical quantity okay that we called as what a transducer okay generally in broadcasting okay 
we are going to convert a sound signal into an electrical signal yes or no for that case okay, in order to convert a sound signal that is generated from the information source into an electrical signal okay, in order to make our electronic devices to work with it okay we are going to use what a transducer okay next we have a transmitter transmitter yes or no whatever the electrical signal that is generated by the transmitter okay generated by the transducer okay that we need to transmit yes or no okay that we need to or oh, transmit yes or no that we can accomplish with the help of a, an electronic device that we call it as what a transmitter and transmitter includes so many electronic devices internally that may be an amplifier it may be a modulator whatever it is at first the transmitter uh, at basic sense a okay, transmitter is used to transmit the electronic signal or electrical signal that is generated by the uh, transducer next a channel okay next it is channel what is channel okay that is communication channel is okay in order to communicate the information from source to the uh, destination Okay, from source to the uh, destination okay we need a channel a connection is yes, between the transmitter and the receiver and this channel we call it as what communication channel this communication channel may be a wired or it may be a, a wireless okay wired means we use okay coaxial cable is yes, optical fiber cable that is nothing but wired communication is yes, okay instead of that okay we can use a wireless also okay wireless communication that means directly we will send the signal from the transmitter into air okay that is nothing but the radio signal into air yes there the channel is nothing but the air yes that type of company and it is going to reach at the receiver okay where the air is going to access a, a medium or a channel between the transmitter and the receiver that type of communication we call it as what wireless communication wireless okay that means channel may be a wide or it may be a wireless okay finally where it reaches the receiver yes okay receiver is going to receive the signal whatever it is transmitted by the transmitter yes or no okay and the signal received by the receiver okay which is in an electrical form yes or no okay therefore okay since the signal received by the receiver is in an electrical form what we have to do we have to convert that electrical signal okay into a original form original form and that means okay suppose song played in at the information source okay suppose okay at the okay the information is a song means again we have to convert that electrical signal again into song okay therefore there again we need another transducer to convert electrical signal again into the sound signal yes or no okay therefore these are the basic elements that are needed one is information source input transducer transmitter channel receiver and output transducer and finally it reaches a destination in original form yes or no these are the basic elements that are needed in order to establish a, a communication yes okay therefore all these are connected together and work okay so that it can these all these elements forms a system that we call as what communication system is while sending the signal from source to the receiver from source to the destination some noise is added over the channel some noise some external noise is added over the channel yes or no okay therefore here we mentioned the noise okay the noise access that access and input to the uh, receiver generally is this is about a communication system next modulation Yes or no? Suppose, okay, where modulation is nothing but, okay, if we want to radiate a low frequency signal, send generally the signal generated, okay, that is voice signal or video signal, yes, okay, or it may be a speech or music, whatever it is, okay, these signals are generally at low frequencies, yes, and these signals can't travel what longer distance, yes or no? Okay, therefore in order to make our signals to travel longer distance okay we are going to use a technique that we called as what modulation that we called as what modulation okay what is modulation it is the process of changing the characteristics of the carrier signal in accordance with the modulating signal or we called as message signal yes okay it is a process of changing the characteristics of the carrier signal in accordance with the message signal 
is that concept you called as what modulation is okay what is message signal message signal is nothing but a modulating signal which is a low frequency signal okay which is a low frequency signal okay that signal may not be able to travel travel longer distance yes or no okay therefore in order to make our modulating signal to travel longer distance okay we are going to use a concept called as modulation okay in the process of modulation okay we are going to use a, a signal called as a carrier signal we are going to use a signal called as carrier signal and this carrier signal is a high frequency signal and this high frequency signal okay can radiate over a longer distance that is advantage is okay as the low frequency signal can't travel or can't radiate over a longer distance we are going to use a signal that is nothing but a carrier signal that can radiate over a, a longer distance in the process of modulation is okay that is a carrier signal okay why the name so carrier means this is a signal this is a high frequency signal which is used to carry the information of the modulating signal that's why we call it as what a carrier signal is modulated signal okay what is modulated signal okay modulating signal is nothing but the signal that is obtained after the process of modulation we call it as what a modulated signal what is modulation Okay, it is a process of changing the characteristics of the carrier signal in accordance with the message signal. That means here we are going to change the carrier signal. Since the carrier signal can able to travel a longer distance, we are going to change the carrier signal where the carrier signal contains the information related to the message signal. Then that signal we call it as what? Modulated. Modulated signal. That means the carrier modulation means variation. What we are going to vary here? Here we are going to vary the carrier signal in such a form such that it contains the information of what? Message signal. Okay, that signal we call it as what? Modulated signal. Yes. Okay. Next, we are going to see types of modulations. Okay, what are the different types of modulation? Yes or no? Okay, therefore, what is the need for modulation? Okay, in order to make the signal to travel longer distance in order to make the information signal to travel over a, a longer distances we are going to use the concept called as modulation yes okay generally we have two types of modulations based on the carrier wave we are going to use based on the carrier wave we are going to use carrier carrier wave we are going to use okay which is a high frequency signal we are going to use Okay, we have two types of modulations. Okay, one is continuous wave modulation, another one is pulse modulation. One is continuous wave modulation, another one is pulse modulation. Okay, what is continuous wave modulation? In this continuous wave modulation, we are going to use a carrier signal. Okay, that is a continuous wave. We are going to use a carrier signal which is used to carry the information of the modulating signal is a continuous wave this in pulse modulation we are going to use the carrier signal that is a train of pulses that is a train of pulses okay these train of pulses are used to carry the information of the message or modulating signal okay therefore based on the carrier wave we are going to use we have two types of modulations one is continuous wave modulation another one is pulse modulation okay again this continuous wave modulation is classified into two types okay, one is amplitude modulation another one is angle modulation suppose if you want to represent a continuous wave how can we represent a continuous wave okay a into cos of 2 pi fct plus theta yes okay based on what what are the characteristics that contained in a into cos of 2 pi fct suppose if you take continuous wave one is amplitude another one is cos of 2 pi fct which is angle plus theta 2 pi fct plus theta is angle okay therefore based on these two characteristics that one is amplitude that is a into cos of 2 pi fct plus theta if we take it as a continuous wave a is one characteristics and 2 pi f c t plus theta is another characteristics that 2 pi f c t plus theta we call it as angle 
and a we call it as what amplitude magnitude amplitude mod okay based on these two characteristics we have amplitude modulation another one is angle modulation okay that angle is nothing but a into cos of 2 pi f c t plus theta what it internally consisting of 2 pi f f is nothing but the frequency and plus theta is nothing but the phase Okay, therefore that angle modulation is again divided into two types one is frequency modulation another one is phase modulation yes okay this is about continuous wave modulation based on the carrier wave we are going to use okay another one is pulse modulation in pulse modulation what is the carrier the train of high frequency pulses high frequency pulses okay the, there we are going to modulate in accordance with the message signal Yes, okay, that modulation we call it as what pulse modulation. Yes, these pulse modulations are again classified into two types. One is pulse analog modulation, another one is pulse digital modulation. One is pulse analog modulation, another one is pulse digital modulation. Yes, in pulse analog modulation, even if we take okay, that consisting of a the train of pulses having the characteristics it is having pulse is having the amplitude and another characteristic is width and another characteristic is the distance between the pulses which is nothing but the position based on these three characteristics that are included in a carrier signal okay again this is this pulse analog modulation classified into pulse amplitude modulation because pulse is having amplitude and if you vary the amplitude is yes, in accordance with the message signal is yes, that is modulating signal we call it as what pulse amplitude modulation next we have pulse width modulation if you vary the width of the pulses in accordance with the message signal width of the high frequency pulses in accordance with the modulation called as what pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation what is pulse position modulation here we are going to vary modulation means variation here we are going to vary the position between the pulses in accordance with the modulating signal is yes, in order to make our signal to travel longer distance is yes, or no, that modulation we call it as what pulse position modulation next if we come here pulse digital modulation what is pulse digital modulation here Okay, we are going to convert an analog signal into a digital form analog signal into a, a digital signal that we can achieve okay that modulation called as what pulse digital modulation okay one such type of modulations in all, in the process of converting an analog signal into a digital signals are pulse code modulation okay we have differential pulse code modulation delta modulation all those things we have that comes under pulse digital modulations okay we are going to see here each each one okay under analog modulation and then we go for digital modulations yes okay under analog modulation okay in this modulation a continuous sine wave used as a, a carrier is yes, already we discussed that here the carrier wave that we are going to use is a, a continuous wave which is going to be modulated in accordance with the message signal or message signal or information signal or data signal or we call it as modulating signal modulating signal is also called as message signal it's also called as information signal or we call it as data signal is yes. okay already we discussed types of analog modulation amplitude modulation frequency modulation phase modulation frequency modulation and the phase modulations comes under angle modulation okay okay this is amplitude modulation okay in this modulation this is a low frequency signal which is nothing but our message signal okay that may be a speech or music whatever it is we are taking it as a low frequency signal we call it as baseband signal baseband signal is also called as message signal or we call it as modulating signal or information signal or data signal is yes. okay therefore this is a low frequency signal as this signal is not able to travel longer distance what we are going to do is we are going to use because it's a 
a low frequency signal and its radiation is poor. Okay, therefore, what we are going to do is we are going to use a high frequency signal that can travel what a longer distance that can travel a longer distance. Okay, here in this modulation, okay, in this modulation, okay, what we are going to do is okay, here we are going to vary the amplitude of the carrier signal. Amplitude, amplitude is nothing but magnitude of the carrier signal, yes, in accordance with the message signal, yes, okay. Here we what we are going to do is here we are not going to send the directly the message signal over a longer distance. What we are going to do is we are going to send the carrier signal, which is high frequency signal that can travel longer distance. Okay, what we are going to do is first we will vary the amplitude of this carrier signal. Okay, in such a form, okay, it is going to be its shape is going to be the shape of what the message signal. Yes, that means here we are going to vary the amplitude of the carrier signal in accordance with the message signal. Yes, if we vary the amplitude of the carrier signal in accordance with the message signal, then that modulation we call as amplitude modulation. That modulation called as amplitude modulation. Yes, okay, here what we did, okay, here see in this waveform C, here what we did, we varied the amplitude of this carrier signal. This carrier signal amplitude we varied in accordance with the message signal. If we vary like that, we are going to get a signal we call it as what? Modulated signal. If you transmit this signal, then what happens? This signal can able to travel a longer distance. But the thing is, when it reaches the receiver, what we have to do? We have to extract our original signal. Original signal, that is information signal. How can we extract our original information signal? by considering the amplitudes carefully if we consider the amplitudes of the modulated signal is yes, we can easily recover our message signal that is baseband signal or information signal at the receiver end yes or no okay that means if we okay when suppose if this is the signal that is transmitted modulated signal which is a transmitted which is transmitted okay when it reaches the receiver okay after receiving the signal if you follow the outer cover of this amplitude modulated signal what is the signal we are going to get our message signal only if we follow the outer cover of this amplitude modulated signal the signal we are going to get is what the message signal only. okay finally we can recover the original signal okay, that is nothing but the message signal at the receiver and we are making the signal to travel with the help of what a carrier signal which is used to carry what the information of the message signal yes similarly we have another type of modulation okay what is another modulation frequency modulation here previously we kept the information okay okay here we kept the information here we kept the information okay previously in amplitude modulation we kept the information in terms of amplitudes but here we are going to keep the information of the information of the message signal in terms of frequency in terms of frequency that means this is a carrier signal and this is the message signal and the second one is a carrier signal and what we are going to do is here i varied the frequency here frequency is constant b if you see the second waveform the frequency is constant okay in order to carry this low frequency signal as it is not able to travel longer distance what we are going to do is i vary the frequency frequency means number of cycles as amplitude increases frequency increases as the amplitude decreases frequency decreases that means number of cycles decreases that means i am varying the i am varying the frequency in accordance with the message signal yes or no as the message signal increases frequency i increased as message signal decreases frequency i decrease that means here i varied the carrier signal in accordance with the a message signal i varied the frequency of the carrier signal in accordance with the message signal that variation we called as what frequency variation that is what we called as what frequency modulation variation is nothing but modulation yes or no okay therefore this signal we called as what fm signal or frequency modulated signal and this signal can able to travel what a longer distance finally when it travels longer distance finally where it reaches the receiver only it reaches after reaching to the receiver then there we have a demodulator 
is we have a device that device checks the frequency frequency based on this increased frequency means it increases the amplitude as the frequency decreases means it decreases the amplitude proportionately based on the frequency we are going to reconstruct the original information at the receiver that modulation we called as what the frequency modulation and the last is phase modulation okay what is phase modulation okay here we are going to previously okay we kept the amp information in terms of amplitudes in amplitude modulation and in terms of phase in in terms of frequency in frequency modulation here we are going to keep the information in terms of angles in terms of phase yes or no? that means the phase of the here we can't able to see but internally the phase of the carrier wave is varied phase of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the, the message signal phase of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the message signal that means this is a carrier wave whose frequency is constant and this is a low frequency signal which is nothing but the message signal okay and this is the phase varied signal the carrier signal phase varied carrier signal in accordance with the message signal that means the phase of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the message signal that signal we call it as what phase modulated signal based on this phase only based on this phase only phase lag or phase lead only at the receiver the demodulator that is one of the device used at the receiver can easily reconstruct the message signal based on the phase changes happen in the carrier signal okay that is phase modulated signal okay this is about phase modulation okay, next what is another class of modulation based on the carrier wave one class of modulation which is based on the continuous wave we have analog modulation okay that is continuous wave modulation okay based on the carrier wave one is continuous wave modulation another one is pulse modulation okay here in pulse modulation a train of pulses train of rectangular high frequency pulses are used as a carrier okay previously we saw the modulations which are amplitude modulation frequency modulations and frequency mod phase modulations in these three modulations the carrier wave is a, a continuous high frequency signal carrier wave is a continuous high frequency signal but in this pulse modulation we are going to use a carrier wave we are going to use a carrier wave which is a, a train of high frequency rectangular pulses yes this is further again divided into pulse analog modulation and pulse digital modulation yes sir okay here already discussed types of pulse modulation one is analog modulation another one is digital modulation okay in pulse analog modulation the amplitude of the pulses the amplitude of the carrier signal which is a train of high frequency pulses are going to vary in accordance with the message signal and one is pulse time modulation time may be a width or a duration okay time may be a width or duration or it may be a position between the pulses next digital under pulse digital modulation we have pulse code modulation okay differential pulse code modulation delta modulation we have is yes. pulse modulation is yes. okay under pulse modulation the first one is pulse analog modulation already we discussed okay in pulse analog modulation we have under pulse analog modulation we have pam that is pulse amplitude modulation pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation in pulse digital modulation we have pulse code modulation where the analog signal is converted into a, a digital form of ones and zeros yes or no yes delta modulation okay this is another form of what a pulse digital modulation which is used to convert an analog signal into a digital form of ones and zeros yes okay next we are going to see digital modulation okay what is digital modulation okay here in analog modulation or continuous wave model in analog modulation is the carrier is a continuous wave and analog signal 
okay that is information signal is also a continuous wave but in digital modulation the information signal which is nothing but the modulating signal because it is a, a digital signal okay in analog modulation the modulating signal or information signal is a, a continuous waveform but in digital modulation the information signal is a, a discrete signal or digital signal the digital signal means ones and zeros yes okay here in digital modulation what we are going to do is we are going to send this discrete signal that is digitized signal from one end to the other end from source to the destination using a modulation technique that modulation we called as what digital modulation okay next under digital modulations okay we have a different types yes okay same as amplitude modulation in continuous wave modulation we have we have amplitude modulation frequency modulation and phase modulation here also we have in digital modulation techniques here also we have instead of amplitude modulation we have amplitude shift key instead of frequency modulation we have frequency shift key and instead of phase modulation we have phase shift keying in digital modulation techniques this is analogous to analog modulations okay what is amplitude shifting okay here also we are going to use a carrier which is a continuous wave same as in analog modulation in digital modulation the carrier wave is a continuous high frequency continuous waveform yes or no okay in this amplitude shift keying we are going to vary the amplitude of the carrier we are going to shift the amplitude of the carrier we are going to shift the amplitude of the carrier in accordance with the binary waveform ones and zeros yes that modulation we call it as what amplitude shift key okay this is one okay this is we call it as what a binary waveform okay it's a ones and and zeros okay what we are we have done is this is a high frequency carrier signal when it is at logic one we are sending a the amplitude carrier signal yes okay when it is zero we are not sending and that means amplitude is zero yes when again it is one we are sending the amplitude of the signal that means we are shifting the amplitude okay we are varying the amplitude in accordance with the message signal that we call it as what modulation only okay as we are varying the amplitude of the carrier signal in accordance with the message signal okay which is a digital signal we call it as what amplitude shift key okay similarly we have frequency shift key yes okay in amplitude shift keying the information is information of the baseband signal that is nothing but a digital signal is placed in terms of amplitude but here in terms of a, a frequency that is the only the difference that means okay see this waveform okay in order to send a binary one we are sending a, a carrier signal whose frequency is more for to send a binary zero here also we are sending a carrier signal but whose frequency frequency means number of cycles are less here again we are sending a binary one whose frequency is more here in order to send a binary zero we are going to send a carrier signal that is frequency whose frequency is less this is the signal which is we call it as what modulated signal yes this signal is radiated into the air and finally this signal reaches where it reaches the receiver next at the receiver okay Okay, what the receiver will do it checks the frequency of the carrier signal when the frequency is more means again it reconstruct a binary one when the frequency is less means it reconstruct a binary zero and when frequency is more means frequency is more means again it reconstruct binary one yes okay like this we'll transfer the baseband signal or a digital signal from source to the destination over a longer distance and the last one is phase shift key Yes, sir. what is phase shift keying here also we are going to send a binary signal from source to the uh, destination over a, a longer distance okay by using a high frequency carrier signal where the high frequency carrier signal phases are varied in accordance with the message signal that means okay if baseband signal is zero 
the carrier is out of phase is transmitted that is cos of omega ct plus pi is transmitted suppose if baseband signal is 1 then cos omega ct is only transmitted cos omega ct is only transmitted if baseband signal is 1 if baseband signal is 0 then cos of omega ct plus pi is transmitted okay see the waveform if you see the waveform then we can very clear Okay, this is the baseband signal. K one zero one zero K one one zero one like that. Okay, therefore, in order to send a binary signal as it's a low frequency signal, can't able to travel longer distance. We are using a carrier. Okay, here in phase, in phase means like this carrier we are sending when it is binary one. Suppose if it is a binary zero, a starting from the bottom onwards that is out of phase that is cos of omega ct plus phi again to send a binary one we are starting from top onwards that is in phase if you start from 180 degrees that is bottom onwards then it is out of phase for zero we are using out of phase signal carrier signal and for one we are using in phase carrier signal this is the modulated signal okay that is going to be radiated into the air when it reaches the receiver what the receiver suppose if it is an in phase the signal is in phase that means phase shift is 0 degrees then it construct a binary one suppose if the phase shift is 180 degrees then it construct a, a binary zero suppose if the phase shift is again zero okay that means in phase it construct a binary one okay like this okay it recovers the baseband signal or the digital signal at the receiver Okay, therefore the these are the references okay, that we have gone through okay okay thank you